Hello, in this video we're going to discuss the Taylor Rule of Monetary Policy. So the Taylor Rule is a guideline for setting a target for the federal funds rate. The federal funds rate is the short-term interest rate banks pay to borrow reserves from one another. And here is the Taylor Rule. It states that the targeted nominal federal funds rate equals R star plus the inflation rate plus G times the inflation rate minus the target inflation rate plus H times the output gap. Let me explain what those features are. So R star is the long run equilibrium Fed funds rate. G, G, this parameter G, is the change in the target nominal federal funds rate from every one percentage point increase of current inflation rate over the target inflation rate. H here is the change in the target nominal federal funds rate from every one percentage point increase of real GDP over potential real GDP. And finally, the output gap is just the percentage deviation of real GDP from potential real GDP or trend line real GDP. And just calculate it as the following. Real GDP minus potential real GDP divided by potential real GDP all multiplied by 100. So just a standard percentage change formula here. All right, so once again, that formula. And now we're going to make some assumptions. So uh, G, we're going to assume is 0 0.5, and H is 0 0.5. Okay, when John Taylor constructed this rule, he found that these parameter values fit the data very well in describing the Federal Reserve's behavior and targeting the nominal Fed funds rate. Uh, assuming the target inflation rate is 2%, that the Fed would like to keep the inflation rate at above roughly 2%. We'll set that at 2%. And we're going to assume long-run equilibrium Fed funds rate, the steady state rate, is 2%. So R star is 2%. Now I'm going to take all these values and I'm going to plug it into this above equation. So R star is 2 uh, G is 0 0.5, the target inflation rate is 2%, and H here is 0 0.5, so making those substitutions. And now we're going to just simplify this a little bit. I'm going to take this 0 0.5, multiply it by this inflation rate, and I'm going to take this 0 0.5 and multiply it by minus 2. So doing that, we get this next step. So the 0 0.5 multiplied by minus 2 is where this minus 1 is coming from. And then I'm going to take 2 minus 1, and we have the John Taylor rule based on these assumptions above. All right, let's do some numerical examples then. So just rewriting our Taylor rule. And now in example 1, the inflation rate is 2% and the output gap is 0. So I'm just going to plug that, those values into our formula. So the inflation rate is 2%. Output gap is 0. Making those substitutions, the targeted nominal Fed funds rate should be 4%. Notice here that the real Fed funds rate is going to be the nominal Fed funds rate minus the inflation rate. So in this problem, the inflation rate is 2%, so 4 minus the inflation rate of 2% leaves us at the long-run equilibrium real interest rate of 2%. Example 2, the inflation rate is now 3%, increased by 1 percentage point, keeping the output gap still at 0 or 0%. Zero Plugging those values into the formula, we see that the targeted nominal Fed funds rate is now 5.5%. Notice here that uh, compared to our last example, the targeted nominal funds, Fed funds rate was 4%, so this is 1.5 percentage points higher. So the inflation rate increased by 1 percentage point, but the Fed funds rate increased by 1.5 percentage points. 
5.5 minus 4. And the real interest rate, the real interest rate on the Fed funds rate increased by 0.5 percentage point. So in our first example, the real Fed funds rate was 2%. In this example here down below, example 2, it is 2.5%. 5.5 minus the 3% inflation. So the, the reason for this, that the nominal Fed funds rate responds uh, more than one for one with the increase in the inflation rate is to try to keep inflation stable and under control. All right, one more example. So in example three, inflation is running at 1% current inflation. And the output gap here is negative. So we have a recession. We're in a recessionary uh, gap. So the shortfall here is 3%. So plugging those values into the formula, we see that the targeted nominal Fed funds rate should be 1%. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.